Okay. Listen up. Listen up. Right. Listen. Okay. Do not eavesdrop. Don't join in guest conversations. If anybody's rude to you, smile and move on. If you wanted a Stepford waitress, you've got the wrong woman. Just... just grit your teeth and think of the wedding fund. OK. Morning. You, uh, you know where the kitchen is. Coming through. <clears throat> Tradesman's entrance. Oh. Round the back. And round the back is where she can stuff it if she's going to carry on like that. Eyes and teeth. Eyes and teeth. It's amazing how you can contact Hoops Internet. This fella used to play at Wurlitzer in Tower Ballroom. Anyway, so there's no point in my marking my card with your name for the first dance. Circumstances prevent me from full participation, yes. You can turn down an offer like that with a full set of limbs and robust constitution. My dancing days are over. Very unattractive in the man. Bitterness. Hmm. Shall we continue this conversation over a cup of Mrs. Hope's finest instant? I am very sorry, but I have a prior engagement. I'd like to get on. Fabulous. You're going to look wonderful in the photographs. Despite the fact that I feel as, as rough as a badger's backside this morning. Yeah, well, you were um, knocking it back rather enthusiastically last night. Uh, and I'd have knocked back a few more if it hadn't been for you and Matthew rescuing me. Thanks, love. I appreciate it. Well, next time, you come and find me before you hit the bottle. Oh. Yeah, look. I found this box of old photos up in the attic. Oh. That is my mother in her maid's uniform. No. Yeah. Uh, I used to hang around the kitchen door, waiting for her to finish her cleaning. Oh, they had a cook in them days, chauffeur, housekeeper, gardener, butler, the lot. And so could you, if you want. Like, it's all yours. You've come a long way. Enjoy your moment of triumph, Tom. You deserve it. Sue Sturgis. Oh, Austin House magazine? Andy, my photographer. Uh, hi, I am Sadie King, and this is uh, Tom King. Thank you. Um, why don't you come with me and I can show you around? Mm. Okay, this way. Thank you. You're set, boss. Yeah. That woman is not only beautiful, she's got a head for business that put my lads to shame. Why our Jimmy divorced her, I'll never know. I want to spend some time with you, but I'm the one who has to get sent home while your ex gets to spend the night. Look, he's got his room and me and TJ have got ours. Now he's back. If you're having second thoughts, then just tell me. No way! Look, he's been inside. We've just got to give him time to adjust. Yeah, we need time together. I missed you last night. I missed you. Don't show you how much. If you're waiting for a room, I'll be back in about an hour. Do you reckon he really means that? Oh, come on. He's come a long way in a short space of time. No need to rub his nose in it, is there? I want you by the front door with the mulled wine. I will be meeting and greeting, and then they'll come through for canapes and Tom's speech. The rest of your team are cutting it a bit fine. Team? There's just... I thought you got some temps in. And I thought you had it in hand. Oh, my... Um, well, I mean, we... I, I could call for reinforcements, but my family's been a bit, a bit tied up since they got back from Spain. Donna? Uh, well, I could ring Kelly if No. You... We're just gonna have to make do. Oh! OK, um, right, it's uh, two glasses per person. This is an open day, not an excuse for the local yokels to get paralytic at our expense. Yes, madam. Do you realise how much this suit cost? And may choose these. Look at the quality. You look like a couple of estate agents. And we are supposed to be promoting a country estate. Now get yourselves up them stairs and change them to some that looks a bit more lived in. I expect Dawn and TJ are thrilled to have a man about the house again. Well, it's not as if she's been short of company while I've been away. Well, that whole lot of a lodger she's taken on is a bad influence, if you ask me. You joke. Well, she's all right. Well, I suppose anything would seem attractive to a man who's been banged up for the past few weeks. Mum! Kelly! Would you, would you decide to straighten her hair? Can I leave you here for the next ten minutes? I don't want to miss anything up at home fun. Yeah, sure. It's not as if I'm going anywhere, is it?
Well done. At your age, I had similar prestidigitational skills. What? Sleight of hand. And enough to travel the world with a simple card trick and two shillings. What's a shilling? Never mind. It's one of them with chocolates in the windows. So where's my cash? 20p? One of them cans, and it's yours. You drive a hard bargain. Yeah. If you need anything else, let's see if we can do business. The state of this lot. They think they're landed gentry. Oh, welcome, welcome. Donna, what? Over here. Eyes and teeth. Thank you so much for welcoming us to your gracious home. Oh, please, go through. But if you could keep those dirty ovals away from the soft furnishings. Just come straight from work. Mm. Only there's those that work in the country and those that play at it. Real country work means getting your boots dirty. <laughs> Glad to see they made the effort. I suspect they were making a point. Dead clever, that. Jimmy. What on earth do you think you look like? I said country chic, not fancy dress. Go on, love, leave it. Oh. <laughs> to the man of born, eh? Yeah. You wouldn't think she grew up on a council estate. <laughs> Any chance of a top-up, Marvin? <laughs> First time I've been here since Zoe left. Criminal what she did to this place. She could have blown Tom King to smithereens. Well, some people might think that wasn't such a bad idea. Mr King has very generously invited Terry and I to join his select party for dinner tonight. What are you waiting on? No man should have to bury his son. It's a miracle that he's kept body and soul together. I am here tonight to offer my wholehearted support. It's a shame it had to be the wrong son that he buried. Sorry. Bad thought. Sorry. <laughs> Have you seen that? There's more handshaking than a lineup at the Royal Variety performance. Drink? Oh, thank you. So, uh, what's this car in, love? I don't know. But if she clicks her fingers at me one more time, this lot's going down the front. Quite in teeth. Look, if he were any kind of man, he'd have packed up and gone home to his mum by now. He can't. This is his address for the probation. We'll get him to change it. It'd take too long. We're stuck with each other till that flipping tag comes off. So what, you're gonna send Danny home every night? You might as well still be with Scott. Can I... Can I offer you a ham and quail's egg a moose bouche? Doesn't look that funny to me. Only laughs we're gonna get round here this afternoon. Hey, I'll tell you what's funny. <laughs> me and Val so prawns in the end of those curtains. <laughs> you are joking. I wish I wasn't. <laughs> Great house. Like some kind of posh hotel. <laughs> you never know. Stab enough people in the back and you might get one of your own. And a good afternoon to you too, Jack. I suppose now you're in charge, you'll be thinking of putting the rent up. Well, I've been through the contracts, but the uh, lawyers don't think we can get away with it for at least 12 months. Uh, if you'd like to come through, ladies and gentlemen. Put a marking on the lawn, you'd never notice we were there. I don't think so. But weddings are where it's all at these days. You can make a very profitable sideline. You wouldn't be short of publicity. The county's <laughs> first mother-daughter double wedding. When hell freezes over, maybe. Donna, Tom's glass is empty. Now, I'm paying you to serve, not to flirt with your boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, like I've got eyes in the back of my head. Shh, shh. She might think she looks good in those breeches, but she can't see herself from behind. Are you just going to stand there and let her treat your fiancé like some sort of servant? Oh, OK. I've got two words for you here. One is wedding, and the other is expense. So if I were you, I'd button it. Chris Tate and his poor father, God rest his soul, both died in this room. Send shivers down your spine. <gasps> Cyanide. You know, they say that that's a terrible way to go. Foam at the mouth, sudden convulsions, and then one painful final spasm. Oh, oh you ghouls, the lot of you. 
uh, uh, thank you all for coming. But the first thing I want to do is to assure you that despite any rumours you might have heard, we're not planning any radical changes. You told us that about the housing development. No, we are going to restock the lake, support the hunt, and we'll be running the shoot as before. We will be expanding the equestrian activities, but that is uh, more Sadie's department. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the uh, estate is in safe hands. Oh, hear, hear. I think me and you need a little chat, don't you? Um, you've got to tell them about the positions that we have here. Oh, uh, <clears throat> we will be appointing a housekeeper, gamekeeper and estate manager. And we will, of course, advertise every vacancy locally. What about preferential treatment for local applicants? Here, here. Yeah. Our plans for the estate will attract more visitors to the area, which will in turn benefit every one of you. Right, now for the fun bit of the afternoon, you can try your hand at clay pigeon shooting. Sadie will be giving a dressage demonstration. <laughs> and you can feel free to wander around the gardens, the stables and the grounds. Enjoy your afternoon. Bravo. Lovely speech. Might as well call it fake countryside theme park and have done with it. Come on, then. You've been dying to have a go since last night. Yeah, but then I end up back inside. And that's not going to happen. I want what's best for Dawn. And if that's you, then I'm not happy about it, but I'm not going to stand in her way. Shake on it. I would do. But I've got an allergy to madness, thugs. Yeah. Well, don't mess her about, eh? For your information, Sadie, you might be playing Lady of the Manor, but this house belongs to the kings, not to you. For your information, Jimmy, I suggest you have a word with your father about who actually belongs here. Hiya. It's a, um, a question centre. Tom must have forgotten to mention it when we discussed the terms. Uh, that's because it's my own personal project. Tom's not directly involved. Right, well, accidents happen, don't they? And, and if they do, or when they do, you're going to need a dedicated vet, aren't you? And there's nobody as dedicated and as local as me, is there? I'd love to say yes, Paddy, but I've already been in touch with the specialists in Houghton. A vet that doesn't kill his patients. No-brainer, Paddy. I I'm sorry. He is so flimmin' arrogant. Ah, it's water off a vet's back, is that? Anyway, have you won the lottery or something? That was you in that shiny new Chelsea tractor, wasn't it? Yeah, um, the insurance money came through. Yeah, they paid up all right. Oh, the, I, 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 I've had so many sleepless nights you wouldn't believe. I'm just glad they've seen you, right? And I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry I ever put you through it. More team? Vicar. <laughs> <laughs> He's still blaming himself. Well, not for nothing do they call it House of Horrors. And that's not just her taste in soft furnishing. <laughs> do you know she offered me the run of the place for the wedding? I turned her down. I mean, who wants to get married in a place that's cursed? Mm. Utter twaddle. Well, there's Frank Tate, Chris Tate, Zoe Tate. Say no more. Bad karma. Mm. That's what they call it. In my opinion, he'd have been better off bulldozing the lot and starting again. He is a decent man who's made good. Now, why can't you congratulate him instead of demeaning yourselves with this, this petty superstition? Mm. Still, I suppose, if you've lost your wife and your youngest son in very tragic circumstances, not much more that can go wrong, really, is there? Mm. Carl's a lovely lad. But I wouldn't give you a tuppence for the other two lunkheads. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to stand here and listen to you malign my employer and his oh, family. Oh, loosen your stays, Edna. Listen, ladies, 
He may very well be as rich as Croesus, but I would not be Tom King for a strong room full of gold bullion. Yep, he might have the big house, but who's he got to share it with, hmm? I think underneath it all he is a very, very lonely man. Lonely man. There oh, we are. Oh, look, Gabby, isn't that lovely? Thank you ever so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any plans for the festive season? Well, Ashley's always very busy, you know, especially yeah. on the day. Hardly has five minutes for Gabby to open her presents. Mm. <laughs> I remember when he was a lad, about five years old, when he opened his eyes on Christmas morning. His little face lit up when he found his very own puppy. Ashley had a dog? Jack Russell pup. Mm. Cost me a month's wages, but when I saw that look on his little face, it was worth it. Strange. He's never mentioned he had a pet. <laughs> Trauma. That's why. Tragedy. Dog went after a rabbit, caught its collar on a tree stump and throttled to death. Oh. oh that's awful. Scarred a lad for life. It uh, explains a lot, in my opinion. Well, give him my regards. Bye-bye. Three months ago, they tried to flatten me. Yeah, well, that shows what an effect prison's had on him, doesn't it? Uh, it's like a frontal lobotomy to sort him out. Look, he's had a lot of time to think about what he's done, and he's very sorry. People can change, you know. Well, if he's changed so much, you won't mind me staying over tonight, then, will he? She thinks she's something else, doesn't she? Let's see how she handles this. Don't be stupid. Ah! Oh! Oh! Steady, steady, <coughs> stay down, keep Idiot. still, keep still. Oh. Right. Right. Are you trying to kill her or what? Oh. Needed knocking off her eye horse, I reckon. She's hurt herself, I swear. Shame so she didn't break her neck. You did that deliberately. What were you thinking? Half the village are watching us and you behave like a lout. How is he, Paddy? Oh, he's all right, there's not a scratch on him. I should take him off the vet if you want him to stay that way. I'm getting a little bit irritated by this constant stream of innuendo, actually. Oh, ignore him, Paddy. He's vile to everyone. Time for your group shot, Mrs King. And I can't seem to find your husband. That's because we're divorced. I do apologise. I thought you and Mr Tom... No, 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 no. He's my father-in-law. Listen, Paddy, you wouldn't mind, would you? His name's on his loose box. Thanks. Will you come with me, please? I'm, I'm not particularly comfortable with this. Yeah, well, I'm scared silly of them. All right. I'm acting my socks off here, but they can smell me fear. If you leave me alone, he's going to play up, he's going to fall over, he's going to break his leg, and I'm going to have to put him down. Thank you. Jimmy has just terrified Cossack. He's irresponsible as well as insufferable. Oh, anyone can make a mistake. Look, we need you in the garden for a photograph and a quote. That reporter thought she was your wife. How sick is that? Well, me and Sadie. I was flattered, Tom. Rather that than be linked in any way to this poor excuse for a man. Uh, give me the bottle, will you, Donna, love? Well, it's a bit early for spirits, don't you think? I mean, especially after last night. And remember, we've got Terry and Edna for dinner. If I want a flaming drink at my own party, I'll have one. I'm going to be in my office and I don't want to be disturbed. What, in the middle of our open day? Well, what about the interview? You two have got enough to stay for yourselves. You deal with it. Oh, he seems a bit touchy. I think someone's upset him. Thank you, Donna, for that insight. Excuse me. I wouldn't have it given rattling round in that mausoleum. No, I would rather be snowed as a bug in our own cosy little cottage. You mean so, <laughs> <laughs> Frida? What are you doing here? I don't suppose you gave my regards to Jarvis. Yes, I did. Oh, and he's not been in touch and time's running out and I'd really like to see him. I think it's time you paid that miserable old curmudgeon a call.
Yes? Tom, what's wrong? I mean, you were so excited this morning, so upbeat. Didn't take long for the rot to set in here. Well, what's happened? Who's upset you? We might put on a show to fool that lot out there, but we can't run away from ourselves. All this was just a sham. Come on now. Don't take any nonsense. What do you want? I'm moving, Jarvis, to Spain. May your paramours cast in their tallers clatter. I didn't want to leave without saying goodbye. Then consider it said. Goodbye. Go with God. God bless all who sail with you. Look, he's got that I've finished with him. I can't start sleeping with someone else right under his nose. Uh, it's your home too. How about you go and stay with Danny? And what about TJ? Terry, you'll babysit him. Look, I'll even look after him if he gets stuck. Oh, yeah. Would you want to get it on? Len and Pearl, hearing aids full blast in the next room. I suppose not. But if I keep saying no to Danny, he's going to think I'm putting Scott before him. How was the do? Apart from being turned down as the vet for the King's new equestrian enterprise, it was a triumph. Can you show the first clients in when they arrive, please? Uh, there's nothing to lack castration on Wednesday. Oh, might as well add me on to the list at this rate. Many calls? Just Dawn asking if she could come round. Right, well, I'm going to be in the surgery waiting in case there's an emergency or a call or a patient. Got what I wanted since I was a little kid, be begging scraps at the kitchen door. But what's it really worth, eh? All this. Well, it, it's a sign of your success. A huge achievement. Your mother would be so proud. <laughs> She'd say, be careful what you wish for, because... And here I am, trapped in my ivory tower. <laughs> I've never been so lonely in my life. It's just me and Danny, we need time to ourselves. Are you really serious about him? Might be. It's hard to tell at first, isn't it? Which is why I was wondering if TJ goes in with Joe, then may maybe you could stay over. Oh, no, I knew you were going to ask me that. I'm just not ready for it, you know? I know I brought all of this on myself. Yes, and it's not been easy for me either, Scott, but we need to move on. In prison, the only thing that kept me going was thinking about you. And now you don't want me anymore. I don't blame you. And in time, I will get used to the fact that you're together. In time. But please, don't let him stay over. I can't take it. Mary. Max. I'd give every penny I own just to have him back. And charity. Well, nostalgia is a... Dangerous game to play. And y you still have Jimmy and Matthew and Carl. You've got me. I lie awake in the early hours, listening to every creak and groan of this place, imagining a hand on the door, a footstep on the stairs. I just lie there. No one to hold. No one to touch. What point is a life without love? Oh. Come on. You know I love you. Have you said it? Yes. You're beautiful. You know, all this could be yours. 
God, I love you. What have you done? It's not what you think. What did I just see, Sadie? Simple. I was comforting Tom. Comforting, eh? That's not what it looked like. Oh. Drink? Not now. Just stay away from me, you bitch. Haven't you got anything better to do? Sadie. Yeah. Good of you to join us at last. Uh, I had a few things on my mind, that's all. Is everything all right, Sadie? Yes, everything's fine. What is? Oh, uh, Sadie's been helping me sort out a few things. Uh, that's right, isn't it, Sadie? Yes, that's right. And um, I have to get changed for dinner. I, I won't be long. An unexpected pleasure, my angel. Your daughter is flaunting her fancy man right in front of my son. Ah. Oh. What do you mean? Ah. Oh. Oh, don't tell me you knew already. Bob, how could you? How could you do this to me again? Just this once, as something of a novelty, could we conduct a private discussion in private? <sighs> you must think I'm some kind of a pervert. Look, um, you were feeling emotional and you had too much to drink. Let me guard down. I need a fool of myself up. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's just pretend it never happened. <clears throat> Thanks for your hospitality. Thanks for coming. The talk's cheap. I won't be happy till we've got it in writing that you won't tear this place apart and start building blocks of flats on it. Are you calling me a liar now, Sugden? <sighs> Economical with the truth, maybe. I know you and your tame thugs would walk over everything and everyone to get your own way. Who are you calling a thug? If you want to insult me, you don't do it in my own home after you've accepted my hospitality. I can assure you that Tom meant every word that he said this morning. Now, thank you both so much for coming. This way. Smashing. Five grand's worth of PR down the drain in one outburst. I don't know why we bothered. What is it with these people? You can smell the resentment. Yeah, I bet you're feeling a bit frustrated. Hey, Dad. <laughs> This is exactly why I didn't tell you. I knew you'd spontaneously combust. He needs all of us to rally around, and she just discards him like yesterday's chip paper. She, she's a free woman. He didn't get round to asking her to marry him, did he? No, no, no. He'd rather marry a lesbian than my daughter. Has she got any idea what that boy went through in prison? Well, of course she has. That's why she's just chosen a moment. He needs her now more than he ever did. But because she thinks it's time to move on, she's turned her back on him, just like her father. Runs a mile at the first sign of trouble. We can't go on like this, Viv. This is what caused our divorce in the first place. We just, we just need to face facts, right? We're, we're, we're pathologically incompatible. I think we should call the wedding off. Don't you? Shop. Better get back to work. Bob. Talk later, okay? Are you in there, Jarvis? Aye. What are you doing? Women, eh? <laughs> you give them the most precious gift of all your art and they smash it to pieces. Then why turn her away? She is heading for a new life in some a fancy mansion, only my blessing. She's going to Spain for her health. She's not being well. I suppose all in all, today might be considered a success. Despite your best efforts to scupper it. Special thanks to Sadie for giving her all to the cause. So, if you'd like to take a drink, uh, Marlon will be serving dinner very soon. Oh, should I give you a hand in the kitchen? <clears throat> no, not tonight, Edney. 
You and Terry will sit down at the table with us as a family. And we're a very, very close family. Aren't we, Sadie? Edna, that hat is really beautiful. Well, isn't this old thing? Yes, I bet you got it from that lovely milliner's in Skipdale, didn't you? Ah, uh, well... It's the old glass half-full, half-empty thing, isn't it? No, the glass isn't half-empty, it's drained. You're just going through a bad patch. You're really good at your job. Yeah, but vets are supposed to cure the patients, not kill them. Well, anyone can make a mistake. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> if it wasn't for the insurance money, it'd have you tell me conscience as well, wouldn't it? I won't be... You've always been a rubbish liar. Keep going like that and he's going to work out some what's up. You then suddenly surprised her. <laughs> she thought he was away. <laughs> was he surprised? <laughs> it's very good. I mean, honestly. Good evening. Um, oh, good evening. Oh, Sandy, bought Gabby an advent calendar today. You had no right. You shouldn't have accepted it. Oh, what's the matter with you? Can't take chocolate away from a little girl. Anyway, we had a nice chat, didn't we, Sandy? Yes, yes. Tell me all about your dog, though. My dog? The puppy you got for Christmas that that died in that tragic choking incident. There really is no depth to which you will not stoop. Oh, 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 oh well, I, I, I may have exaggerated a little. If you don't mind. My wife and I were enjoying a quiet drink. Yes. <laughs> See what it's like? <gasps> Don't fall for it, Laurel. Mm. Her bones are not up to it. Her dancing days are over. So she says. Then before she goes, why not give her the chance to make amends? She's had her chance. She but one who decided to throw it away. all over me. All this could be yours. If you hadn't seen me, you'd have bedded him by now. Oh, don't be absurd. He was upset and depressed. And you made your move. Preying on a vulnerable, sad old man. You're sick. It had nothing to do with me, I swear. Then you were to your bond. Go on, make me laugh some more. You lay one more finger on my dad, and next time you fall off your horse, you might not get up again. Don't you dare threaten me. It were you two. Always huddled in corners. What's going on? Jimmy's got a little indigestion. An excess of bile, I think. Dinner's re... Sorry. Dinner's... Dinner's ready if you'd like to bring your guests through. I'll go and tell Dad so he can get a seat by you, shall I? Something's going on. What's the big secret, Sadie? <sighs> For heaven's sake, Matthew. Paranoia isn't in. Why does everything have to be about you? Any one of them cans going? If you ever have any kids, treat them better than I did. Or, or you'll end up a lonely, bitter old man. Sorry, couldn't decide what to wear. <clears throat> you look gorgeous. Didn't I buy you that top? Should we go? Thanks for babysitting. We might be quite late, so don't wait up. Why are you torturing him like this? Mum. I don't see why you have to flaunt your new bloke right under his nose. Mum, I've told you I'm cool with it. It's all right. And not content with ruining his life, you're ruining mine. The wedding's off, and it's all your fault.
Every woman that I've been involved with has ended up dumping me. Welcome to my world, Scott. Don't let this split you and Bob up. I've caused enough heartache as it is. I stand up for my own, like a tigress guarding her young, and if Bob can't understand that, well... <sighs> well, that's exactly what he's doing for Dawn, isn't it? Now, how do you think I would feel if the wedding didn't go ahead because of me? Donna would kill me for starters, which would mean you'd have two of your kids doing time banged up. That's not funny, Scott. I just want you to be happy. The same way I want Dawn to be happy. Wish you wouldn't have been my mate. You really think so? You need to go around to Bob, apologise, and tell him I'm cool with it and the wedding's still on. Well, why is it always me that has to be the one to back down? Because if you don't do it, then I'm going to have to. And you know what happens if I break my curfew? Do you want me to go back to prison? <clears throat> well, the chicken was delicious. Oh, it was the one Marlon entered in the pub <laughs> chef competition? <laughs> Not the actual one, obviously. No. <laughs> So, um, uh, you feeling at home in this place yet? Oh, yes, the minute I walked through the door. Although, I did live here for a while with Jimmy. But now she's set her sights higher. Haven't you said it? Look, I, I won't go on. I think I've said quite enough for one day, but I'd just like to thank you all for making the event, well, a success. <laughs> and to thank the staff for services beyond the call of duty. And to Edna and Terry without whom we could not have managed. Oh, no, really, there's no need. Edna and Terry. Edna and... Oh, for heaven's sake, Donna, will you watch what you're doing? Hey, hey, steady on. She's done a great job today. Well, if you hadn't have been too mean to employ professionals, you wouldn't have been stuck with me. <gasps> Time to get the coffee and festive Donna. <sighs> now Dad said his bit, I reckon it's my turn. We've only just started seeing each other. It's not like we're committing a crime, is it? And it's bad enough having Scott breathing down our necks. Please don't make me feel guilty for this as well. Viv? Viv? I think we need another private conversation. Yeah, you're not kidding. Come on. So what are we going to do tonight, then? Tough one. Well, we could go back to my place and let Scott play Gooseberry. There's no harm in staying over. Viv can't go ballistic twice, can she? Danny, it's too soon. Oh, terrific. So what do we do? Brabland and Pearl are staying in the pub till closing. If I thought it'd work, I'd give it a go. Hello? Yeah. All right, then. OK, we'll see you soon. Bye. Joe's invited us over to Paddy's for a drink. Let's take a bottle of wine. Cool. A day which has been etched in my memory, as I'm sure it will be in all of yours. I'd like you all to join me in a toast to Dad and Sadie. I hope they'll be very happy together. Perhaps Dad would like to explain to you all why it was that he had his tongue down Sadie's throat earlier today. Hands everywhere they were, getting right into it. Sorry, uh, oh. silly me. Is that the time? Uh, I think... <coughs> Is this true? No, it wasn't like that. We can sort this out later. In the meantime, I'd be grateful if you would show some respect to our guests. You should have heard him. Begging for it, he was. All oh, this could be yours, Sadie. And like the practised whore she is, she got right into it. You're sleeping together. You two. Why the hell would I do that? You mercenary gold digger. You're sick. You call the man dad, for God's sake! I really think it's time we... You um... ran the old swine, dad. I hope you've got a big stock of drugs, because if you can't keep up with us, she'll dump you. Isn't that right, Jimmy? How dare you? Oh, suddenly it all makes sense why you moved heaven and earth to get rid of charity. Terry, I, I can only apologise. We can see ourselves out, Tom. Are you going to be OK? Thank you, Terry. I'll see you in the morning. Eyes and teeth, Marlon.
Go on, then. Take a swing at me, if that's what you want. You're making such a song and dance about it. If you were half a man, you'd knock seven bells out of me. No. Oh. No, you'd rather show me up in front of my family, my staff, and now the village. I think I've been humiliated enough, don't you? I didn't mean it about, you know, running away. Well, I didn't mean it about being pathologically incompatible. So what are we going to do? From today, you put me first, kids second. I'll do the same. From now on, we've just got one great big amorphous mass of children. Yeah, our children. We don't take sides. I do my best. It's the only way that we're going to grow all together. Do you still want to marry me? I won't rest until my ring's on your finger. Oh, I do love you, Bob Hope. I do love you, Viv Windsor. Oh, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> You can see that you're busy. Mm -hmm. I just helped myself. I then served Len and Pearl and um, I've written it all down. Just give us a few minutes, will you? We haven't quite finished yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Were you going for the full set or have you already had a go at Cal? Oh, he was emotional. He was telling me how lonely he was, how he's got no love in his life, how much he loved me. Do you think I wanted that to happen? I think you were unlucky you were caught at it. What were you doing? Saving the big revelation till you had a ring on your finger? Why the hell do you always have to think the worst of me? That I'd even dream of sleeping with a man that I've been calling Dad for the past 12 years! So what did happen? He was upset, so I put my arm around him. He was talking about Max and Mary, how much he missed them. And then he launched himself at me. And you didn't fight him off? Oh, it was bad enough having to reject the old fool. What do you want me to do? Make things worse for him by slapping him around the face? Screaming rape? Calling the police? <sighs> What's the point? You've made up your mind. Well, you can think what you like. I don't care anymore. Who's that? Hello? Don't come any closer. I warn you, I'm armed and dangerous. Yeah, right, and I'm Cat Dealer. Hell's bells, boy. Did nobody ever tell you what a sudden shock can do to the elderly? If you don't give us another one of them beers for that calendar, I'll grash you up to Tom King. Now, what would you want to do that for? Pull up a chair. Are you hungry? I might be. If you fancied a beer, all you had to do was to ask. There's only ever been one man for me. Why would I even seriously look at anyone else? On my wedding day, I knew I was making a terrible mistake. I married the wrong man, Matthew. I never loved Jimmy the way that I love you. When the hell didn't you say something? Well, what could I do? Split up the family? Break Tom's heart? And if I told you and you rejected me, well, I don't know what I've done. I don't believe this. And now the joke's on me. You know my deepest secret. How does it feel, Matthew, seeing me so vulnerable? I've just given you ammunition on a plate. What are you talking about? It nearly killed me watching you marry Jimmy. I never thought you'd go through with it. But after we got engaged, you just blanked me. You, you got Tom to send you abroad. I thought you didn't care. I went away to stop myself doing something stupid. If I'd wrecked Jimmy's marriage, what had I done to my dad, to the family? 
I was waiting for you to say something, but you never did. So I married him. And you wouldn't have gone through with it? All it would have taken is one word. Unbelievable. And now you tell me. What a flaming mess. I love you, Matthew. I've loved you all these years. Why do you think I never had Jimmy's baby? Come here. Thank you.